Hey everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Tony and her uh, beautiful trek. Uh, Tony, welcome to the channel. Nice to be here. And uh, how long have you been on the road now? Well, with this rig, I started uh, actually in October. I bought it the previous December and spent that time getting it ready. Um, I have had two other rigs. But so far, so good. Oh, you really like it. I love it. 14 miles a gallon, what's not to like? Oh my goodness, yes. I've never <laughs> heard of any RV yeah. getting, big RV getting 14 miles a yep, gallon. They're consistent too. It's been very consistent. And so it's a Trek. Mm -hmm. um, and what makes the Trek get that kind of great gas mileage? Well, I think it's the Isuzu engine. They engineered it to do that, and they only made it for, I don't know if it was four or five years, 92 to, that's a 93, 95 or something. And then they started putting other things, and of course you can get a lot of other models that are longer, and they all have some kind of safari name to them, like Cheetah, Panther, whatever. But they started putting all kinds of different engines in them. And they quit with the Isuzu, which I think was the dumbest thing ever, but. Yeah, and that's an industrial engine. In, it des is. Designed to go a million miles. It is, and I had 147,000 on it when I got it, and I figured it's just barely broken in. So it sounds like you've had kind of a, a, a nomadic bent for a while now. How did you? A little bit. Um, I had to do the thing like raise the kids mm -hmm. and do all that. And um, and then I finally remarried uh, six years ago, but unfortunately my husband passed away. We had actually both been going to leave in uh, October, but he had a brief illness. But it was more my thing than his. He was ready to get out of the snow, but I'm the one that always did the buying and you know, researching and what have you. And he says, okay, just do it because you're going to anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> that's been me. I was a boat captain for 15 years. And, you know, so I've lived a 12 volt life, you know, very much previously to this. So it's really just got tires instead. Right. Yeah. Now there's so much similarity between yeah. marine living and, uh, and RVing. Absolutely. Yeah. But I love it. I just can't wait. I'm just getting started because I only got here a week ago to Quartzsite. Right. So lots ahead to see and do. Yes, and I'm ready. Do you have a uh, uh, social media to record your travels and people can follow you? Okay, right now um, my Facebook is consistent. Um, I do have a website blog and uh, my YouTube. I'm getting it underway. I've got stuff that I haven't uploaded it yet because I needed to get a good editing program and a better camera. So that's where I am, but when that starts, it will be right on my Facebook page, Antonia on the Road. Antonia on the Road. Yes. Okay, yep. just so remember So I have been that. posting pretty consistently. So you're retired and you have an income and you're just uh, I'm enjoying. I'm semi-retired. Um, I've still been doing some work. I mean, I got laid off with COVID, so. I'm still kind of, you know, job searching. If, if I find something, I, I would want it remote at this point. But at the end of whatever this go around of unemployment is, I'm going to officially retire, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm on Social Security. I do have Social Security. So. Right. And you can get by I have on to be that. frugal with it. But. Right. Yeah, we all do. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like you've always had an adventure spirit. You were a boat captain. Absolutely. Uh, so you weren't terribly fearful at coming out. No. They're just, just the next thing in your life. Yeah. And uh, another thing people worry about sometimes is uh, being lonely and not making friends. Has that been a problem? No. No, I was very fortunate. I mean, you know, you think about it. I mean, okay, and it's just a matter of, you know, how you approach people and you talk and either they want to respond or they don't want to respond. But right. You know, I had a tour boat, so I'm used to talking to people and approaching to people. You makes know, a big difference. You had to, yeah. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it, uh, you know, it, it's a simple. People are lonely and they don't have enough friends, but uh, the solution is really simple. If you want friends, you have to be friendly. Exactly. You just have to break out of your shell and exert yourself and write someone. And That's true. And I'm reclusive, too. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. perfectly happy going out in the back 40 and spending time, you know, and then I feel like I want some interaction, you know, whether you talk to somebody on the phone or, you know, just say, hey, where are you guys hanging? Can I hang out with you for a while? I mean, that's, 
an easy thing to do, you know? You just gotta do it. Right, yeah, yeah, just uh, just gotta make yourself do it. You're yeah. not gonna, they're not magically gonna be best friends everywhere. You gotta no. put in some effort. You do, you do. Okay, would it be okay if we took a look at your rig? Absolutely. Let's do that, I'm really, uh, we don't see a lot of class A's. And why did you choose a class A instead of a B, C, or van? Well, way back when I first even thought of, you know, choosing a larger RV from the trailer, I thought class C's. And then um, my husband and I were looking together and the other one we had was a Fleetwood Flare and we had and wanted small, so that one was 25 feet. We got it, took it to Kentucky, worked the camper force down in Lexington. Uh, but when we got it back, we knew it had issues and it was not a prudent purchase. And it turned out we knew a section of the roof needed to be done, but it turned out to be the whole roof. And we said, yeah, no. So we gave it to a friend that wanted to dive into it. And then I went on my next search. And I had remembered these way back when I was looking at the Airstreams because they have a cult following. Yes. And they're aircraft aluminum, aluminum frame, and that's what I wanted. So I was just, like I said, fortunate to find one in New Hampshire, you know, because they're just, you don't find them in the East. Okay, can we take a look inside your rig? Absolutely. Let's, let's do that, folks. And so we're inside your beautiful uh, trek by Safari, and man, it just feels so open in here. How, uh, did you make some changes? Well, um, not a ton, really. Um, the biggest thing I did, which there were two, I call them boudoir chairs, you know, little um, just armchairs, uh, one on either side here and a table that flipped up, which came way out here. They were horrible to sit in. And I already had a vision of making this into like a little living room by just bringing a couple things from my house. And uh, yeah, so I took them out. And I also, the previous owner had put down thick carpet squares, which carpet squares and dogs and desert, uh, yeah, that wouldn't have worked. So I uh, put this floor down instead. This used to have a double bed that went uh. up to the ceiling which is why this is so open for its length. This is a jackknife sofa, but it's like sleeping on, you know, what it is, a glorified van seat. Right. And it's short. And so I bought a hammock, <laughs> my bed in a bag. This is literally what this was folded up in, this pocket, when I got it. Mm -hmm. So what I do at night, And also, the main thing that allowed me to, in this rig, if somebody else wanted to do it, they would probably have to shore up their frame, but this is aircraft aluminum frame. So all I had to do to make my bed, I hang one hook here. And one hook here. And then I line it with a sheepskin get my sleeping bag, I get in bed, and that's it. Wow. You can turn side to side, you can turn across it and be diagonal and flat. And honestly, it's the most comfortable sleep I've had. You can even rock yourself if you mm -hmm. want. Yeah. This is why you have such an enormous amount of space. It is. You don't have a bed. It is. And the trucks all, some of the, even the larger ones still have this bed and they have a rear bedroom, but you're getting up into 28 or 30 feet. Right. But that's why they're so wonderful because, it's, again, it's like living in something, you know, 10 feet longer. Right. So, yeah. And so uh, this is 24 feet? 24 feet. Yeah. Boy, this is so big and open and feeling. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I and mean... And you don't have any slides. See, that's no, how people I, that's are That's the last them. thing I'd want. Yeah. Last thing I'd want. That's why when I knew I could open up the floor space, that's what I did. And I mean, literally, you, you know, you can have people in here. And So one really neat thing about this, this oh, wow. folds down to extend my floor. Wow. And when the door is shut at night, it's wonderful because it keeps a lot of the cold out. But it's also, I took out one of the chairs, so it's made so that you have two and you can slide your chair back and what have you. But 
I've had, you know, my daughter and one of her friends came and we sat here one night and did a puzzle and had a blast. Yeah. Four burner propane cooktop. Mm hmm And you can see the counter space. Yeah, that's a lot. That's just a small kitchen. Yeah. A household kitchen. Yeah, and this, the other thing, these were considered coaches at the time that they were done and Monaco did take these over. But everything in here is solid wood. There's not one piece of fiberboard. Oh, that's great. All the drawers, and you can see there's tons of space. I yeah. mean, I have more in here than I should. Yeah, you're, this um, is bigger than most apartment kitchens, or as about the same. And it's got enough lights for the Queen Mary, but I don't use any of them. I use lanterns, and I have my Berkey, like everybody. Mm -hmm. Big, uh, big fridge. Really Full big fridge. size fridge, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I usually run it mostly off propane. It's got fingerprints all over it. But um, and this that's a huge fridge. This rig has an over 20 gallon propane tank. Wow. <laughs> it's like a depth charge. Yeah. And one of the guys at Tractor Supply was filling it and he kept looking around because he thought there was a leak because he hadn't filled one that, that was that size on a little rig like this, you know. I can go like if I'm just using that, the refrigerator and stove, I can go five weeks almost on the propane. <laughs> wow. Standard bath, uh, the bathtub is full of stuff, but it's got a knee-high bathtub. Oh, wow. And tons of, you know, storage space, and my uh, tanks are all back there. And the nice thing is they are between the belly liner. Um, you know, they're up under. They're not exposed. My water tanks. Um, oh, and this was my other little project. <laughs> oh, that's you. Yeah, I, I made it my own. I went on eBay and I bought all these 50s and 60s maps and I cut the covers off of them. That's really nice. Aren't they neat? I've still yeah. got some left over. Yeah. yeah. I was scraping that, that off. Okay. And uh, what are you doing for solar? Okay, for solar, I started out and have now um, the Harbor Freight solar panels they were easy to come by you know i was able to get a good price on them and i and i've of course seen a lot of your reviews on solar i just that that's coming but i chose them because of of their empress um panels uh -huh. um and so they do uh get a good charge even when it's cloudy out that is their strength yes that's their strength very nice, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, Class A. Just huge and open feeling and homey. This feels like home. I'm totally happy with this. You know, it's nice to be able to stand up and, and walk around and for me. Well, Tony, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. This is just fantastic. So folks, I know you, got a, uh, uh, you enjoyed this video, seeing this great rig. Uh, if so, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Bye now. <laughs>